Go ahead, Kathy. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to this chat as we celebrate the 10th San Luis Film Festival event this year. Tonight, we're going to have uh, filmmaker Lori Coley with us. But before we talk with her, hello, Ms. Co Ms. Coyle. Um, I'm Kathy Navarro, and I'm a proud volunteer for the San Luis Film Festival. And let me just go ahead and ask Mr. Carrillo, president and founder of the Film Festival, to give us a warm welcome from San Luis, Arizona. We, we, good evening, everyone. Buenas noches a todos. Uh, we are getting ready for the 10th anniversary of the Film Festival, which is going to happen in November. And we're, we're doing this series to... Um, commemorate the 10 years of our small festival. And tonight we have a wonderful guest, Ms. Lori Coyle. And we're gonna have a little conversation here for the audience on Facebook. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to put them in and we will address them um, as we speak here. Bienvenida, Lori. Gracias. <laughs> Thank you uh, for inviting me. <laughs> um, I am uh, connected from uh, San Luis, Arizona. Kathy is connected from San Luis, Sonora. And Lori mm -hmm. Coyle is connected from San Francisco, California, from uh, cooler places. <laughs> OK, um, why don't we go ahead and uh, um, let Ms. Coyle um, uh, say a few words. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for uh, to the San Luis Film Festival for reaching out to me because it was really a very special experience to attend the festival in 2018 to screen Adios Amor. I want to say thank you for uh, to the San Luis Film Festival for reaching out. I am hearing my own voice. I don't know if that's possible to get rid of or should I just ignore it? Just ignore it. <laughs> okay, all right. So that was an amazing experience uh, because uh, in the first place, the protagonist of my documentary, Maria Moreno, uh, spent a lot, a lot, uh, an important part of her life in the San Luis area uh, doing anti-poverty work. And also she was a preacher and uh, she created a ministry in uh, uh, Elegido, Elegido Colima, I think was the name of the place. And um, she was in the San Luis area for a long time. But beyond that, I, I really feel um, very passionate about building bridges uh, between both sides. And I, I think that the border is an amazing place. I've spent a lot, a lot of time there working on different film projects. And so it was very wonderful to come together. There was a huge turnout of, of Maria Moreno's extended family. Mel multiple generations attended the festival and the screening, and we had a wonderful experience. And there were also very interesting other female filmmakers there. And for example, there was a documentary about Chavela Vargas, the uh, incredible Mexican cantante. And so it was just a special time to be there. So thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. And uh, I, I speak for myself as a documentary filmmaker. I don't know if I speak for anybody else, but uh, I, I'm happy to share my, my story with you. Eh, Lori, estamos muy uh, honrados con tu presencia. Y esperemos que esta no sea la última vez que nos reunimos. De hecho, aquí en vivo, te invito, no. te invito a que nos acompañes en noviembre cuando estaremos celebrando los uh, 10 años del festival. Pues después sí, me hemos contestas, salido de después me la pandemia. <risa> después me contestas. Vamos a ver cómo, cómo sigue lo de la pandemia. Eh, Tenemos sí. una listita aquí de preguntas eh, y, uh -huh. y así es como vamos a ir haciendo un poquito informal uh -huh. la plática. Um, we uh -huh. have a few questions. This is going to be kind of an informal um, conversation okay. and um, feel free to interject. Um, and then um, we are going to be, um, there's already some comments and questions on, on Facebook, Lori. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> We'll, we'll, we'll um, take those in a little while. First of all, um, um, how did you become interested in cinema, cinematography? Y para nuestra audiencia uh, en español, solamente para recordarles que vamos a estar interactuando en ambos inglés y español. Y esta primera pregunta que le queremos hacer a 
Lori Coyle, es cómo le nació el interés en las, por la cinematografía. Go ahead. You may, okay. you may answer in either English or Spanish. Okay. Uh, do you want me to do both or will one of you translate one, or one we're will, just gonna one will, just... One, one will be fine. Muy bien. Uh, well, <laughs> my, my father had a little eight millimeter movie camera when I was a child and uh, he let me use it. And by the time that I was 13 years old, I was running around in the hills with my girlfriends and we were making silly little movies. So that was the start. And after that, I kind of dropped it. Uh, and uh, I really wanted to be a visual artist, like a painter and an etcher. Uh, so I went to France and I studied uh, visual arts for a year. And I came back and went to Berkeley and it was a very political moment on the 1970s. Um, there, there was the war in Vietnam. Uh, there was my experience in France of how people of many different nationalities were experiencing the United, the United States. And um, coming back to Berkeley, I eventually understood that uh, filmmaking, documentary film was to me the perfect coming together of my uh, creative interest with my political uh, commitments. And so that's actually how I got started um, Ironically, I actually went to the border the, the month after I graduated from Berkeley. I went to El Paso, Texas to do an oral history of the Farrah strike, which was the first successful organizing drive of women garment workers in, in the Southwest. And um, I ended up staying there later and taking a filmmaking class from a local, uh, uh, a local TV station. And that got me started in wanting to make films about the border, but just wanting to make films in general about social justice issues. So that's how I got started. <laughs> the, Long the, story the, short. And <laughs> when I'm talking too much, just like, you know, go like this, pull the cane and pull me yeah, out the stage. No, 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 that, 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 that's fine. That brings me to another question that, you know, because of your answer, was that the reason why you did Oro Orozco? Mm, that's because really, you're pa you're mm. passionate about art and you know your mm. um yeah your immersion in art in mm -hmm. Europe right well honestly I have to say that um, it was when I was in Berkeley and my contacts there with people doing human rights work I realized that I kind of lost my interest in French uh, because everybody at Berkeley doing French they were like very frou frou. And I really wanted to, you know, being being a Californian, I wanted to be Spanish speaking. So uh, I took six months off and I went to uh, Mexico and I spent one one month doing immersion in Spanish. And from there, I met my best friend and she and I spent six months traveling throughout Latin America. We made it as far as Ecuador. We thought we were going to go to Chile and Argentina, but that didn't happen. And probably fortunately not because things were very dangerous there at the time. The two countries were moving to the right. Chile had had a coup. Um, but anyway, when I was in Mexico, I visited the great murals of the Los Tres Grandes, uh, Diego Rivera, David Alfaro Sequeiros, y Jose Clemente Orozco. And I thought they were beautiful, but it wasn't till I returned to Mexico in 1985 uh, that I, I met, well, I met a, uh, an amazing couple, uh, Antonio Ramirez and his wife Domi, Domitila Dominguez, both very well known Mexican artists. And they took me to an exhibition of Jose Clemente Orozco in Mexico City. And I fell in love with his work. And I thought, why is everybody in the United States only talk about Diego Rivera and David sure. Alfaro Siqueiros? How come we don't know Orozco? For me, he was the most interesting. And that was the 1985 earthquake year. So we were there for the earthquake wow. and uh, uh, ended up having to leave uh, a little bit early for that reason. But he stayed in my mind. And um, it was, uh, uh, I started reading up about him. And what I discovered was that his life was as amazing as his artwork. And so for that reason, I thought he would be an incredible subject for a documentary film. Thank you. Um, you. Should I try to say that? If I try to say that in Spanish, it will probably be a disaster. <laughs> no, I, I, I think um, Facebook is doing 
closed captioning. So oh, people, qué padre. Qué bien. yeah. Uh -huh. So I think that uh -huh. that's gonna take care of um, that issue. Uh -huh. So don't okay. worry. Yo don't tenía worry. que negociar con con este con con Inba, con el Instituto Nacional de Bellas Artes, con Conaculta, para recibir permiso para estar filmando. En los murales que son en espacios públicos muy importantes, uh, sí, sí. Palacio de Bellas Artes, uh, el Hospicio Cabañas en Guadalajara, uh, uh, um, ¿cómo se llama? El Templo de Jesús, que es en el centro de, del DF, uh, que fue su, bueno, no su última, pero uno de sus últimos este, murales. Ajá. So, yes, I, <laughs> I was, uh, I remember I went, uh, this was so funny. I went on a location scout to Mexico with my cinematographer, Vicente Franco, who's an amazing cinematographer. He's worked on, you know, hundreds of documentaries. And uh, we went to do a location scout at the Suprema Corte de Justicia in the Supreme Court, where Orozco has an important mural on the mezzanine. And we were there at the mezzanine trying to figure out how are we going to make this time lapse shot of people passing by the mural and so we lay down on the floor to try oh, okay. and get the camera angle and we're lying on the floor looking there and this very well dressed elderly gentleman with gray hair very very impeccably dressed comes up to us and says in beautiful english he says can i help you <laughs> So we jumped up, and <laughs> we jumped up and uh, we said, oh, excuse us, excuse us. We are here because we are going to be filming. It turned out that he was one of, era uno de los justicias. He was, he was, a, he was one of the justices of the Supreme Court. Wow. Yes. Oh, wow. And yes, it was quite amazing. He was very, 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 um, uh, very gentle and kind with us. And later on, when I had to write an official letter to the Supreme Court to get permission to film there, I was able to send it to him and, and he helped us expedite our permission to that's film great. in the Supreme Court. Yes, it was quite that's an experience. Wonderful. That's, yes. a, that, that's a beautiful, beautiful anecdote of um, your work. And you probably have hundreds of uh, <laughs> anecdotes uh, mm -hmm. you know, throughout your career. Um, tengo otra pregunta. Um, uh -huh. um, which uh, genre of uh, cinematography attracts you the most? Kathy? Oh, wow. Sí, antes de que nos conteste, pues yo creo que a muchos eh, les agradaría saber que, qué tipo uh, o qué otro género, bueno, el qué género cinematográfico le atrae más, porque la conocemos como documentalista, pero uh -huh. ¿habrá otro interés en la carrera de Lori? Mm. <risa> Ay, la verdad, me interesa todas las, todos los estilos de documental, uh, de documental. ajá de documental ensayo, como lo de, uh, ¿quién será? Estoy pensando en un ejemplo. Uh, uh, Rodrigo Reyes, ¿lo conoce? No. Ajá. Eh, él acaba de sacar un documental que se llama um, 499, que es como una fantasía que va viajando a través de México, um, uh, Cortés, y encuentra cómo, cómo es México actualmente y qué es como que, cuáles son las consecuencias de la con, conquista. Entonces, me gusta mucho porque está jugando mucho con, con, con la forma, ¿verdad? Es un ensayo crítico, cultural, político, pero también eh, va, estamos este, mirando la vida uh, cotidiana de los mexicanos actualmente. So I love that. I also love uh, some certain docudramas, like there's a film called La Ciudad or the City about, uh, about the Mexi Mexican immigrants or Me Latin um, immigrants in New York City. Very beautifully shot. It's a drama but it's shot in black and white and it's completely with non-professional actors. It's with actual immigrants. So I really, the beautiful thing for me about documentary is that every single documentary is making critical artistic decisions about how to represent reality. And there's not one form that is the best form to do that. You know, I love cinema verite. 
if I were not such an introvert, <laughs> I would love to be, you know, jumping on the front line and doing everything in cinema verite, meaning you are just filming the actuality as it's transpiring. You have to be willing to embed yourself in, in a place, in the life of a community, and you just have to be able to stay there. That was not a realistic thing for me because I, I was a mother. And so um, for me, it made more sense to make films where I could sort of plan them in advance, like the biography of Jose Clemente Orozco, he died more than 50 years ago. Uh, the story of uh, Maria Moreno uh, was also more of a history film. And so I had a little bit more control over combining um, the elements that were happening spontaneously with the elements that I could plan in advance. So uh, I really couldn't tell you that I love one style over another. What I love about documentary is that it's, it's always creatively about making decision how to represent the story. What is the proper way to represent that particular story? And it can be a bringing, a coming together of many different styles. And, and how about, I hope somebody's wow. translating that. <laughs> <laughs> that. That's very powerful to know, uh, because being a journalist, obviously, for me, uh, writing stories of reality mm -hmm. or real life is, is, is very similar to, to giving yeah. you know, stories about uh, in, in a documentary. But talking about drama or fiction mm -hmm. stories, mm -hmm. have you explored that kind of productions? Doing, doing uh, fiction instead of documentary? No, I have not, not personally, not as a director. Uh, I did produce a film by Lourdes Portillo called Columbus on Trial, which is looking at, uh, it, it's once again, it's, it's very uh, experimental. She's working with a comedy troupe called Culture Clash based in Los Angeles, which is Herbert Sequenza, Rick Salinas and uh, Richard Montoya. And they wrote this script about looking at Columbus and what he had done and what his life had done. And so it was like a courtroom scene or something like that. So it, it was, it was of course very fictional, but I haven't personally worked on fiction films. No, I really don't think that I have. Yeah. So I, I in that sense, I love them. I love them. I have many favorite directors, but um, I haven't personally worked on them. Can you name one of your favorite directors? Oh my goodness. Just one, just one. Just one. Uh, solo, solo un director favorito. Ozu. Ozu. De Japón, de Japón. Uh -huh. Japones, mm -hmm. from Japan. Japones. Sí. Mm -hmm. We will be addressing uh, the questions and comments of our Facebook followers mm -hmm. in a little while. Mm -hmm. um, so stay tuned. We still have, um, uh, a few more minutes to, to chat with Ms. Coyle here. And I have uh, uh, another question. We see that many of your stories include female characters. For example, Mi Historia, mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, Albertina Sarasua, uh, Volver, Olga Talamante, uh, tenemos women uh, at Farah, and por supuesto, Adios Amor, Maria Moreno, mm -hmm. um, with the exception of Orozco. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, mostly females mm -hmm. in your career. And if I'm mistaken, please go ahead and correct me right now. <laughs> no, you're not mistaken. Uh, I think that uh, I have always, I mean, I've been working in the business for more than 25 years. So this may all sound very anachronistic in a certain sense, but honestly, when I began working, there were very few films that featured women as the main characters, very few documentaries that featured women as the main characters. And it was interesting because uh, at that time, second wave feminism was having an impact on history and uh, scholarly work, academic work, intellectual work. And there was beginning to be um, a wave of amazing research being done on women and women workers, but it wasn't really showing up on public television. You know, it was not showing up on public television very much at that time. And so I felt very driven to, uh, to 
to document those stories, to research the stories of the, those women, because they were making an essential contribution to our history, to our society, but they were always working behind the scenes. They were in the background. And uh, I think that also I have to say that I have worked on many other people's films as a producer, as a writer, as a researcher. And I worked on so many films about illustrious men. <laughs> Ralph Ellison, Cesar Chavez, I mean, you name it, it, it went on. I worked on many films about illustrious men. And so uh, when I was able to, I said, okay, that's enough. It's time to work on a story about a woman who's been left out of the history book. And that was Maria Moreno. So, yes. And that takes me, that takes me to some of the questions and comments on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we have some uh, comments from Lisa Alama. Alama. Uh -huh. Alama. Uh, Alama. Um, hello. Thank you for Alexander's. And um, some questions of um, how did you meet Maria Modern or family? Mm -hmm. And um, we have some guests from Ecuador. Wow. <laughs> the place, the, the place <laughs> that you visited back in the day. Yes. <laughs> okay, so, so yeah. Those Where are the should comments. I start? Okay. Um, uh, if well, you first, want to address uh, them, yeah. Sure, I mean, I think it's, it's, uh, it's very relevant, significant that Lisa Alama is posing the first question because it was through Lisa Alama that I made contact oh. with uh, Maria Moreno's family. In other words, when I started making the film, I really, really thought that I was going to probably be making a short film about a woman that disappeared and that all the film would have, that it would be more of an essay or a short, a short experimental film about women being invisibilized in history. Um, and all I had were the photographs, uh, but I started putting the work out through various mediums um, that I was working on this project. And it was actually a friend of Lisa Alamas named Michael Kennedy, who works at the university in Yuma. He saw one of my notices and he knew that Lisa had written a piece about her grandmother and had even had her grandmother declared a uh, 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 given a, a historical tribute by the Tex Texas state legislature. So um, he contacted me and he said, is this the Maria Moreno? And I said, yes. And he said, well, I know her granddaughter. So I talked to Lisa and Lisa immediately networked with her entire extended family, all of Maria Moreno's still living daughters and sons and uh, arranged for us to meet. So um, I met them, uh, not all of them, but I met part of the family, the California family in Marysville, California. So yes, thank you, Lisa, if you're out there, uh, you've uh, been an incredible uh, mover and shaker in terms of bringing people together. So, so, uh, so uh, seemingly little project brought to, uh, to you a bigger, a bigger project, which is Adios Amor. Oh, wow. Yes, when I met when I met the Moreno family in Marysville, um, once they started telling stories about Maria Moreno, and only ten percent of those stories made it into the final film, I said, "Wow, this is quite a story," and I knew it was a bigger story. Uh, what I didn't know, of course, was that it was going to take me so many years to track it down. I was three years into production before I found any audio recordings of Maria Moreno's voice. And that was fascinating because everybody that I met told me what a powerful speaker she was. And here I was making a film where we couldn't hear her voice. So I was in Detroit when I found the first recording of her at the university archive there. It was a wonderful revelation. And, that um, <laughs> and, uh, and right now, Lori, I'm gonna play the trailer mm -hmm. of Adios Amor. Uh, for those who, like Kathy said earlier, have not seen it, you have a chance to at least see the trailer and then we'll, we'll just keep um, 
letting people know how to acquire a copy later on, okay? Okay. Give me one second. Sí, y mientras el señor Carrillo, eh, lo que nos está comentando es que vamos precisamente a proyectar el trailer o el video promocional de Adiós Amor para aquellos que no han tenido la oportunidad de conocer la historia de María Moreno filmada por Lori Coyle. Aquí lo vamos a, a ver y vamos a seguir platicando sobre esto. Gracias. One, two, three, one, two, three. My name is Maria Moreno. I'm a mother of 12 children. We start working real early in the morning that the children don't have enough sleep. That didn't have enough to eat, not even clothing. I have a lot of things to say on agriculture workers the way we were, the way we suffered, the way we've been treated. She was fearless. She could move a group. She'd have <laughs> these people in tears telling her story. She wasn't afraid to say whatever she had to say, whether it was a politician or a worker or whatever. She was a pain in the ass, and she would not back off. Here's my mother's second grade education, and she's doing this. And it was just like, wow, it blew me away. I guess we got rights, and it's time to ask for justice. And then one day she disappeared, and I don't know what happened. ¿Conoce usted a María Moreno? ¿Dónde podría localizarse? There are 273 listings for a María Moreno. That's it. Oh, right here. There it is. Oh, my goodness. This is too much. This here is yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm wondering why oh. I was frowning. Yeah. <laughs> I like this one. This is so yeah, yeah, but it's it's a This one. I think this oh, was like a yeah. I'm 73 years old and I miss my mother still. Oh, Look at how beautiful. Oh. House is right about here. Oh, yes, yeah. I'm going home. And there, there is nothing. The road is our home. The ground is our table. Any place we go, there's our home. Praise God. I am going home. I'm an American citizen and I'm talking for justice. That's such a beautiful story. Una, una historia muy bella que estuvo por tanto tiempo escondida eh, sí. bajo la sombra. Sí. Um, and I'm so glad that through your art, through your talent, you were able to bring it out to life. Mm -hmm. Muchas gracias, a Lori Coyle. And before we ask you a few questions about um, uh, the, the movie, uh, Maria Moreno and, and, and the future uh, in your career and, and other mm -hmm. things, let me address some questions from the audience on Facebook. Um, we have Ed Mac, I hope I pronounced McCon. this correctly, Macon. <laughs> uh -huh. um, he's watching from Oaxaca, Mexico. Uh, what future film projects is Laura contemplating? Don't answer now. We'll we'll answer that question um, later on. Okay. Mm, and then Lisa, my grandmother Maria Moreno, she's my hero. Um, it is really amazing how you've given a voice to someone who would have been forgotten. Areza is making a comment there. Um, so we, we will address your projects in, in a little while. Um, Laura, if you don't mind. I have um, a few other questions. Um, 
uh, and my first one, this is about uh, Adios Amor. And, and my first question is, why Adios Amor? Katy. Sí, así es. Pues yo también personalmente le quiero agradecer por esta historia tan poderosa, porque bueno, um, así como muchos que vivimos en la frontera, somos hijos o nietos, o incluso hay personas que todavía siguen trabajando en el campo y obviamente se involucran por las necesidades de sus propios compañeros. Uh, independientemente del campo o de ser, ser cam campesinos, pues es digno que conozcamos la historia de una persona que hace este tipo de, de labor. Así que muchísimas gracias porque personalmente me parece muy, muy bien realizada y queremos preguntarle precisamente comentando como la pregunta que hizo Antonio es, bueno, ¿por qué adiós amor? Sabemos que es la búsqueda de María Moreno en el título, pero ¿por qué, por qué adiós amor? Uh, the, the, those words uh, sí. by themselves, mm -hmm. adiós claro, amor, sí. why? Esas palabras precisamente. En el... Espero que puedas traducir porque creo que si trata, si trata de explicarlo en español. Bueno, le hacemos la lucha. Eh, okay. A, 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 okay. A, adelante. Ok, bueno. Um, en, prim, en primer lugar. No, you do the English, I'll do the ah, Spanish. Ok, ok. In the first, there are three reasons for the title. I mean, there are many reasons, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep it to three specifically. Hay, hay, hay muchas razones, pero nos vamos a limitar a tres. Okay. The first one is that when I was researching the story, I found footage, film footage, in the National Archive from Maria Moreno's era. La, la primera es porque encontré en los archivos de la Nación Información sobre María Moreno. Sí, y encontré, I found uh, a documentary roll of black and white footage of farm workers harvesting oranges in, uh, in, eh, eh, in Tulare County. Encontré eh, un, un rollo de celuloide que incluía imágenes de los trabajadores del campo de esa época. Yes. En, en Tulare. Uh, I think it was in Tulare. La verdad no me acuerdo el nombre del pueblo, pero era una cosecha de naranjas. Uh, por it, was this, it was the orange harvesting. Uh -huh. Okay, whoops. I switched. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and it was so beautiful. In this footage, you're watching all these farm workers climbing up and down the ladders, picking oranges, moving, moving, moving. And I, you can hear this person singing, Adios Amor. Adios Amor, Adios Amor. And you can't see who's singing. It, it, and it, it was the perfect metaphor for the story that I was making, which is that you're hearing about this woman, but she's not visible. In, 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 esta, in, estos, in este rollo, eh, podía ver imágenes de los uh, eh, pescadores de naranja y en el trasfondo escuchaba una canción que decía adiós amor, adiós amor. Y era tan bello ver eh, eh, a los pescadores de naranja eh, y con el trasfondo de la música que decía adiós amor, adiós amor. Y era la metáfora perfecta para lo que yo estaba haciendo en, en mi investigación de María Moreno. Y en la búsqueda, sí. And the second reason is that the song itself was very popular in Maria Moreno's air at that time. It was called No Llores Más. Y, y, la, segunda, y la segunda razón es porque eh, la canción tan popular eh, era una de las preferidas de Maria Moreno. Yes, and that was a song that was sung and listened to by many braceros at that time, people who, were, who had come as braceros. And it was also the meaning of the song was so beautiful because it perfectly embodied the sacrifice that migrant, that migrant workers must make because in order to support their family, to sustain their family, they have to leave them behind. And that's a terrible contradiction. It's, a, ese, it's very painful, yeah. Y en ese tiempo, eh, además, la canción era muy popular, especialmente con los braceros que venían de México a trabajar en los campos uh, 
de los Estados Unidos y eh, es una canción que muestra eh, lo que ellos están haciendo y el dolor por el que pasan para, para sacar adelante a sus familias. No, sí, en, en particular es, es una canción en que el, el, el cantante, el hombre, es, se está despidiendo de, de, de su mujer, de su, de su esposa, y dice, no llores más, um, don't cry, no llores, porque voy a volver. Y eso, la verdad, es la realidad de todos los trabajadores uh, migratorios que cruzan la frontera o que trabajan en el campo, que, que van de, de cosecha, de pizca a pizca a pizca y que dejan, que, que necesitan dejar sus propias familias para poder mandarles dinero y sostenerlas. Y esa es qué contradicción, ¿verdad? Porque quieres estar con tu familia, pero quiere, tienes que dejarlos um, para poder sostenerlos. Es como, es, muy, es una tragedia. Pero también muestra la res, resilience, la resiliencia, ¿cómo se dice resilience? La fortitud, igual, la fortitud. Uh -huh. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y al fin de terminar la película, me di cuenta de una cosa que nunca había pensado. Si rompes, si ves qué quiere decir adiós, amor, dice adiós. Y en el caso de María Moreno, su camino en la vida salió del movimiento laboral de ser predicadora. O sea, ella fue a Dios. She moved towards God. And so that, that was kind of an interesting thing that wasn't part of my choice to make the film, but I saw, I, I noticed that afterwards. If you look to the origins of what a Dios means, it's literally to God. To God. Yes, yeah. and she, uh -huh. she, dedic she dedicated the later part of her life to God. Sí. Tenemos uh, saludos desde Woodlake, California. Y oh, qué bien. Y tenemos <laughs> wow. saludos desde San Luis Río, Colorado. Eh, Manuel Cue nos acompaña. Mm. Qué bien. Pues Woodlake fue el pueblo en donde empezó a organizar María Moreno. Ajá, uh -huh. en Woodlake. Pues me da mucho gusto que nos estén viendo desde Woodlake. Sí. Eh, y, y segundo, esta es mi segunda pregunta. ¿Why María Moreno? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think there are many women who have been overlooked. So I would have to say that the original inspiration for María Moreno was the remarkable photography that was done by George Ballas to document her story. Because if he had not taken those photographs and I had not found them, stumbled upon them when I was looking for pictures of Cesar Chavez, we wouldn't, we probably still would not know her story beyond this, the, the, her community, her family. Um, the people in her religious community. So really the film is also an homage to the documentarians of the 1950s and 1960s who went out there and documented the struggles for social justice. It's really an homage to them and the beautiful work that they did. They really, it was so significant that they captured this history that otherwise would have been lost. So yes, Maria Moreno, was very significant because it turns out she was the first campesina to be hired as a union organizer in the United States. And that makes it very significant. But I didn't realize that at the time I started making the film, I found that out much later. She was the first campesina to be hired as a union organizer. And uh, she was Mexican American, she's indigenous. Her grandmother was, uh, her mother was a uh, 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 mescalero Apache. So to have an indigenous Mexican American Texan uh, with 12 children be hired as a union organizer and then become the spokesperson for that union. Wow, that's incredible. Excellent. Um... You have mentioned a few cities that um, 
that uh, you went to to the filming of Adios Amor, um, uh, one being Wood Lake, um, the other one being San Luis Rio Colorado. You mentioned Enejido, and are there other cities that you traveled to do the filming? And mm -hmm. how difficult was it to, to film in those cities? Mm. Well, yes, I, I did go on the road and sometimes I went by myself. Uh, I always went by myself to do an initial research and then I would come back with my crew. Uh, so we filmed in Texas, we went to Maria Moreno's birthplace, which is down in the, uh, uh, gosh, I, I don't know. It's like se the center of Texas. It's south, um, it's like a little bit uh, east of San Antonio. And uh, we went there to film in the archive that had her birth record. So that was a really, wonderful experience because uh, I, I went with her daughters and her daughters had never been to that town. It's called Carn City. And it's, um, it's, it's a very small place actually. And um, when we went, there's still a lot of poverty. Now they're in the middle of a, they're in the middle of a big oil boom. It's one of the fracking centers of Texas. But uh, so Carn City, Texas was a remarkable experience. And of course we traveled to the desert to the place where Maria Moreno took her children outside of a place called Wendon, Texas, which uh, Wendon, Arizona, which is completely off the road. We were completely driving through the sand. And in fact, uh, on the way out, one of our uh, SUVs got stuck in the sand and it took us three hours to push it out in the dark. We were pushing in the dark <laughs> to get on a solid enough piece of road that we could drive out. Um, so that was an amazing experience as well, going to the desert in Arizona. Um, of course, we traveled to all the places where Maria had organized, Fresno, Visalia, Tulare County, up to Marysville, Yuba City. I also went to film on the coast um, to film farm workers harvesting today in the strawberry fields of Santa Maria, Oxnard. I also filmed uh, garlic workers in, in Huron. Um, so I, I traveled to many, many different locations to uh, look for Maria's story, but also to film farm workers today to see what was happening with them. Yes, and you're right. I did go. I did go to the Ejido Colima to Ejido Colima. see the to see the church that uh, Maria and her uh, congregation had built. It, it, is the church still um, in service? It is, but it's no longer uh, with a pastor that is um, that the Moreno family is connected with. I, I don't know the current pastor. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Um, quite a journey to to do the search for Maria Moreno. Um, was there any besides the Wendon situation? Was there any difficulties that you run into that you remember as kind of anecdotal for for our audience? Mm. Besides besides being mm -hmm. stuck in the sun for three hours, <laughs> in the dark for three hours, the not dark. the sun. In the dark, <laughs> we were lucky. It was after sunset, so it wasn't hot. Uh, well. It was very, very, very hard to get permission to film um, to film farm workers to film a harvest. So that's why most of the footage that you see in Adios Amor of that shows uh, women harvesting was actually shot by me with a little uh, HD camcorder where uh, I was driving around with a, a, a friend who was the founder of um, the Líderes Campesinas, which is a California organization of farm worker women. And we were driving around Fresno County, uh, going to different places and Huron. Um, and I saw some women out working in the field. And so I, I, I said, pull over and I got out and I chased, I started running after these two women, they were on a break. And I said to them, can I, can I film you? And they didn't answer. 
They didn't say yes or no, they just started laughing. They got out of their pickup truck and they started wa walking back into the field. And I said, well, what the heck? So I chased after them and I started filming. And there was one woman in particular who I was filming and I said, am I gonna get, see, si le estoy filmando, va a tener problemas con el mayor lomo. Cuando llegue el, el mayor lomo. And she points to this tiny little Oaxacan woman and she says, ella es el mayor lomo. <laughs> so it was kind of like, okay, she's the boss, you know, she was the, and so that was so interesting to see that right there in the field, there were women who were in positions of, of, uh, of authority. Um, so I filmed there and uh, it took a really long time to find a farmer who would let me come on his property and film. And I was fortunate that through my colleague, Rick Tejada Flores, his wife had a, a brother-in-law who had a cousin who had a small orange grove in, um, in Fresno. And he let us come and film. And that was very late in the production of Adios Amor because in general, the agricultural industry is not going to let you come film if you're making a film about farm workers. They're not going to let you on their property. So I, I, it finally worked out, but it was not easy. Um, Lisa says, uh, we had a lot of fun that day in Wendon, Arizona. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I have photographs of her on her knees. Uh, we, were, we were all on our knees smoothing the sand and putting cardboard under the wheels to try and get some traction to, to get the SUV from being stuck in the sand, yes. <laughs> hey, Kathy, um, you have a question? Sure. Um, I remember we had, that night when we screened Adios Amor, we had a, a lot of members of Ms. Maria Moreno's family, and they we, we had the chance to meet them and, and obviously to know what they, uh, you know, what their, their impressions of the movie were. Uh -huh. Y quería preguntarle, bueno, ese es un reconocimiento muy grande. That's a very, uh, you know, nice compliment from, you know, receiving from, from the family of the uh, main character of your movie. Uh -huh. Y quería preguntarle, bueno, esos reconocimientos, uh, también hubo otros reconocimientos aparte de agradecerlo por la familia, la película recibió reconocimientos. Well, yes, I mean, we shared, uh, we, we won the Imagen Award in 2019 or 2020 for or the broadcast in 2019. And we shared that with the other, uh, the three other documentaries in the 2019 season. So that was really great to win the Imagen Award. And I, my thanks have to go out to Latino Public Broadcasting to Luis Ortiz and Sandy uh, Viquez Pedlo because they had the vision to understand that the story of a little known woman, somebody who was not famous at all, that it was still a very important story. So as soon as I sent them the finished film, I immediately got a phone call from Sandy, the executive director saying, we want this film. We wanna take this film to PBS. We're going to give it a national broadcast and uh, I was like, great, wonderful. I want everybody in the country to see it. I want them to see Maria Moreno's story. So they worked very hard to bring it to PBS, uh, to get their whole team to publicize it. And we had millions of viewers watch the mm -hmm. film all over the country, millions of viewers. So that was very gratifying after all the hard work that we had put in after everything that the family went through. And um, yes, I think it was, it was very gratifying for all of us. Do you still have contact with the, with the, with the family of Maria Morenos? Absolutely, absolutely. We're still in touch. In fact, I saw the family for the first time since the pandemic started uh, two weeks ago. There was a memorial, a memorial for Maria San Tito Moreno, que murió de COVID hace un año, and uh, wow. we we met together uh, in a in a church. Uh, all the doors were open, so there was circulation, and everybody was vaccinated. And we met, and there was a, a beautiful tribute to Tito. Mm. So yes, and when actually when the film was released, the family was very very involved. Whenever possible, I would take one of the family members to a film festival with me 
or to a conference or to whatever. So the audience was thrilled. I actually, not none of them were like San Luis because normally it was like maybe one family member would show up or maybe five or maybe there were 10 at the most. But in San Luis, it was like the whole clan showed up. And uh, I don't know if you can, I don't know if you can share a screen, but if you can, I can show you a um, photograph. So yeah, I can show you a photograph of the whole there were, family. There were a dozen or more than a dozen people there. Yes. Uh, uh, Laurie, it was about uh, 20 people, I think. Yeah. Do you have the picture, Lori? I do. Let me okay, just. Go uh, ahead. Go uh, ahead, let me. Okay. Let me. It'll take me just a minute to find it. Okay. And which, uh, which uh, takes me to another question while you are uh, looking for uh -huh. the pictures. Um, obviously, and, uh, other documentaries that we we have watched, I remember the, the most of the characters or or the people who were you know uh, once uh, filmed and talking about the the topic of the documentary, they are not alive anymore. Mm -hmm. what, yeah. what was your your uh, yeah. impression, or how do you feel to have? you know, the chance to meet them in person and they are alive and, and they are, you know, sharing their uh, experiences and, and, and the topic itself with you while you were screening or projecting the, the movie. I'm sorry, say that again. Are you talking about the people in the movie sharing their yeah. experiences or the audience? No, the, the people showing their, their experiences. I mean, the, uh, the family or mm -hmm. some other people who knew María Morenos, porque sabemos que muchos documentales muestran a personas que ya no están vivas y no se puede platicar con ellos sobre la experiencia de la película. ¿Cómo se siente, cómo se siente Lori a, al poder platicar con ellos, con algunos de ellos que todavía están vivos, como la familia de María Moreno? Oh, well, it's, it's always a remarkable experience to... Uh, it's, it's, there's something very special when you ask people about their life or their past, because what you come to understand is that we often don't speak about, we don't tell the stories of our life. We hold them inside. And a lot of times elders do not tell their story. They don't tell their children of the struggles that they went through. And um, so I, I, I have the photograph whenever you want to start sharing my, want me to share my screen, Antonio. Um, so it's very special when you ask, um, should I share? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, there it is. How do I make it? Okay, share, there we go. Okay, that is the San Luis Film Festival. Um, that's, uh, a big part of, I see that, uh, here. okay, here, get us out of the way. Yeah, so there, <laughs> there are the members of the Moreno clan. That's Lisa in the middle there holding a, a, a niece or grandniece. And uh, Tito's over there wearing the little fedora, or I guess that's a pork pie hat. So anyway, that was a wonderful experience in San Luis. So it's very special to be I would say it's a gift to ask somebody about their life because it turns out that most of us are not going to share our lives unless somebody actually asks us. But it's also a gift that they give you when they tell you their story. So the gift is going in both directions and that's very special. And it was wonderful to have the opportunity to interview the Moreno family members, um, to, for them to talk about growing up, all the incredible adventures that they had growing up with their mother, Maria Moreno, and their father, Luis Moreno. It was, you know, very a lot of funny stories, heartbreaking stories, you name it, all kinds of stories. It was also very beautiful to interview the elders, uh, the photographers, the reporters, um, the other organizers to help tell their story because they also had been forgotten about. Mm -hmm. They also had been ignored. They also were buried. 
And so it was really about reviving a whole era and not just one individual, but all of the people who had been there at the time and the way in which their lives came together with a particular passion and a sense of mission. So yes, it's beautiful to interview people and to hear their stories. And I always feel blessed when I, when I come away from those sessions. Thank you so much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was so nice to meet them and to see their enthusiasm, their uh, happiness when they said they, eh, su orgullo por, por presentarse a sí mismos. Yo soy Tito, yo soy los demás, soy, yo soy la hija, soy la nieta. Cuando iban llegando, pero no fue un orgullo como vanidad, sino, ay, gracias por tenerme aquí. They were so nice, so humble to to be invited to be a guest of the uh, of the event it was so emotional for them and so so nice for us to uh, you know to to meet them and to to know that they were they were there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. before we continue Lori, I, I would like to give uh, the morena family my condolences about the passing of tito and uh, mis condolences a toda la familia sí, um, Gracias, Antonio. Um, what other projects are you working on? Um, if you want to stop sharing, that would be fine. <laughs> sí, quisiéramos saber más sobre, sobre Lori Coyle. ¿Qué, ¿Qué otros proyectos está trabajando? Si tiene algunas otras producciones que nos pueda platicar. Uh, not sure how to stop sharing, but I'll here I'll bring that up. Uh, oh, oh, on the top, to on the top, on the top. There uh, is stop a red sharing. Yeah, Bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I have to say I'm spreading myself rather thin right now. I'm working as a writer and a story consultant on a documentary called Crossings, which is about a group of international women peace activists who cross from North Korea into South Korea. And that's quite a remarkable story. Um, it includes uh, women who are Nobel Peace Prize activists from Africa, from Ireland, uh, from uh, Amnesty International in Chile, uh, from Colombia, from Korea, Japan, China, throughout the United States. And anyway, it's, a, it's quite a remarkable story because you can imagine they're facing a lot of pushback and a lot of very difficult challenges. So that film will be done soon and it will probably be coming out in the fall. So I'm working on that. I also have in development, I have a, <laughs> I'm working on some short films about women <laughs> um, to continue in, a, in for that a change. Yeah, for yeah, a change. Yeah, right, for I'm a change. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess what's different about this one is that I'm working on a film which is scripted called Caprichosa, which is about the a woman who uh, was the, I guess you would say the illegitimate daughter of Francisco Goya, el pint gran pintor español. Wow. Uh, and uh, nobody knows anything about her, of course, but it turns out that he taught her to paint and that she was an artist. So it's kind of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, my feminist track about visual women in the visual arts. And uh, what's different about it is that it's a monologue that I wrote in her voice. So I've never, done that before. So I'm working on that. Um, and I also have in post-production a document, a dance film of a Zimbabwean dancer called Dark Swan. And um, I'll be finishing that sometime this year. And I have in development a documentary about a Palestinian family in the United States and uh, the father's memories of growing up in Palestine and losing his homeland and coming to the United States and making a new life. So again, I'm very driven to the stories of, of refugees and immigrants. And I guess that's because of my own background. My grandparents were Irish immigrants. And um, so I grew up with that sort of view of the world that we all come from somewhere else and uh, we all leave something precious behind and how can we try to honor it and hold on to it? Mm -hmm. Well, given, I'm sorry, Kathy. Given the current sure. circumstances, you're you've been really busy, mm -hmm. <laughs> whereas some other people are not not working at all. 
So the the pandemic uh, didn't stop you, my, my dear. <laughs> well, not entirely, yeah. but it has been very different. For example, I, I am not in production. I am not in production. And that's the only writing. reason uh -huh. I, I'm writing and uh, I'm mostly writing. And some of these projects were already shot. The dance film was shot uh, way before the pandemic. Uh, so I'm waiting till we get more emerged from the pandemic to edit it. And the Caprichosa is just writing and uh, looking at Goya's art. And uh, the Palestinian film, uh, I have already filmed a lot of it before the pandemic. And um, it's also very based on amazing home movies and photographs, which I love working with. I love working with those kinds of me mementos and memorabilia. Mm -hmm. Where, where can we find uh, Adiosa more or more of your movies? Because obviously uh, those who could not watch the, the, the documentary while we were screening and, and obviously if they are watching the trailer right now mm -hmm. in our life, Maybe they are interested. Absolutely. La mejor es yes. si quieren saber dónde más podemos ver la película o, o Okay. Películas. Well, I'm sorry to say that it's not streaming right now, unfortunately, uh -huh. but I would be happy to set up a stream for the film festival whenever you want uh -huh. to do that. So, let's, uh -huh. you know, let's plan that. The distributor of the film is a wonderful organization called Good Docs. And their focus is on bringing films into the classroom and to community organizations. So they prefer to send it to groups of people who are already organized. So you can find the film and show it to your groups. You could rent it. It's um, www.gooddocs.com. So um, we can put that in the chat, I guess. I can put their... Um, I could actually, you know what, I'm going to put a link for you guys in the chat so that you can go there. And mm -hmm. um, how would I put it? If you don't have the opportunity to stream, and I, I would love to stream, um, I would love to stream with San Luis Film Festival. So we will make that happen, definitely. We'll just have to figure out a date. So uh, right now I'm going to send you into the text, the connection to my distributor Good Doc so that you can bring it to your classroom or your church or your, your community. And if that doesn't work for you, then, then send me an email on the website. Okay, let's see. How can I we put will. the email in the chat? Mm -hmm. uh, because I, you can reach me. Okay, let's see, I'm putting it in the chat now. Thank you so much. To rent Adios Amor. Let's see and, if that and, worked. And you have mentioned a lot of projects, um, mm -hmm. Lori. Well, mm -hmm. um, my invitation is always open for you to screen them here. Um, we've, we've been um, partners <laughs> since Adios Amor. So, um, our festival is open to you, and uh, we're closing with um, with that. Um, I, I thank you. I thank you very much, uh, and um, we hope to see you soon, uh, Katy. Sí, yes. pues eh, hubiéramos eh, nos encantaría seguir platicando con Lori y obviamente pues le agradecemos mucho que nos haya acompañado. Eh, tal vez pues en otras ocasiones vamos a seguir. Aprovechando estas oportunidades para invitar a nuestro público y vamos a anunciar en dónde pueden conseguir el material y las películas que ha hecho Lori. Uh -huh. Y okay. pues no sé si quiera cerrar con un comentario para que nosotros pues ya luego invitemos a nuestro público a nuestras actividades. Pues solamente agradecimiento para haberme invitado y escuchado. <laughs> la charla. Una charla. La entrevista. Sí. Puse este, mi página de web en el chat también. Ahí pueden eh, encontrar más información sobre todos los proyectos que ando haciendo. Y este, si quieren seguir, tenemos la página de Adiós Amor en, en Facebook. Uh, y po puedes, pueden seguir uh, 
lo que está pasando ahí. Uh -huh. Pero, y a bueno. ver cuándo, y claro que vamos a estar en contacto con Antonio y Katy para ver cuándo podemos hacer un streaming ah. de Adiós Amor. Por supuesto que sí. Muchísimas gracias, Lori. Thank you so, so very much. Um, before I, I move on and, and, and let uh, Mr. Carrillo uh, to uh, give us a, a closing remarks, I want to thank you again for your time, for your inspirational stories, and obviously for your work, because, of, because we all want to, to, you know, to know more about our culture, our uh, migration, and, and all those uh, topics that you that you work on. Muchísimas gracias de nuevo porque son temas muy interesantes que nos son familiares como la migración, como la cultura, como nuestras raíces. And, y antes de decirle al señor Carrillo que haga pues el cierre de esta noche, quiero recordarles que el Festival de Cine de San Luis, Arizona, pues celebramos este año ya 10 años. Es nuestro décimo aniversario. Vamos a anunciar en breve el programa de este año que va a ser del 16 al 19 de noviembre en San Luis, Arizona, y vamos a anunciar unas, unas sorpresas más, así que estén, estén atentos. Stay tuned because we are going to, uh, in brief, briefly or next, in a, in a, in a few next uh, days, we are going to celebrate a, a press conference and announce our uh, program for, to, uh, for, to, for this day. I mean, for, for this year, I'm so nervous because obviously I'm so excited to have Lori Coyle for that with us. And we're going to announce the Pam San Luis Film Festival program very soon. So stay tuned. We are going to celebrate it November 16th to the 19th in San Luis, Arizona. And more, more, more to come. Thank you so much from San Luis, Mexico. Muchísimas gracias desde San Luis, Sonora, Rio Colorado, Sonora, Mexico. Thank you, Lori. Saludos desde San Pancho. San Pancho. Eh, y a nuestros uh, seguidores en Facebook, a nuestros uh, fans, les damos las gracias por haber estado con nosotros. A Lori, un abrazo. Cuídense, por favor. Utilicen las, los cubrebocas. Eh, si, se tienen, si se quieren vacunar, vacúnense lo más pronto posible. Paremos esta pandemia. Buenas noches. Un beso y un abrazo a todos. Gracias. Saludos a todos. <laughs>